Hi guys, we will start with the third part of management and administration, proxy. On behalf of a member of the company, if any other person is attending and voting at a meeting, he will be called as proxy. So from there, we will start with the provisions and we are now in during the meeting. Before the meeting, we have already done to visualize. We have done with notice. We are done with explanatory statement. That is before the meeting. During the meeting, we started up with quorum, chairman, proxy, then voting, then resolutions. This is during the meeting. And after the meeting, minutes of the meeting and any other that is to be considered. So this is what we have. Uh, we have divided in, into three and we are now in the second part, proxies. Now let's go one after another. Okay. Section 105 deals with the provisions of proxy for meetings. Okay. What did I tell you? Any member of the company who is entitled to attend and vote at a meeting of the company shall be entitled to appoint another person as proxy. That means he will be allowing the other person to, to, to attend and vote at the meeting on his behalf. So he can attend, he can vote, but he has the right to speak or not, we need to find. See the next point, however, a proxy shall not have the right to speak at such meeting and shall not be entitled to vote except on a poll. Voting is actually four types to be covered. Only on a poll, he will be able to entitle to vote and not for any other thing. So attending and voting means not for all the voting options, it will be available. It is only for poll and he shall not be entitled to vote except on a poll means only poll is allowed and he has got no right to speak at any meeting at uh, that particular uh, perspective that we are covering from the provisions of act. applicability. Okay. Unless the articles otherwise provide, this subsection shall not apply to a company not having a share capital. That means here AOA authorization is important. So ensure that your articles is really strong talking about your proxy. If the company is not having a share capital. Okay, so that's very, very important. Okay, next. Can you appoint a proxy on behalf of the member to a limit? Is that only for one person? They are saying a person appointed as proxy shall act on behalf of such member or number of members not exceeding 50. That means still 50, yes, you can appoint a proxy. 50 members can appoint to do it. But the beauty is not that the beauty is holding in aggregate not more than 10% of the total share capital carrying voting rights. Even if it is 50 members, if it is exceeding the 10% of the total share capital of the company, he cannot be allowed to be appointed as a proxy. 50 members is not a big deal. The point is everybody when they have 5-5%, five, five that means only two people they can do because 50 members, still 50, it is okay. But all this in aggregate should not be more than 10%. That's a very important thing. Let's take for an example, 1-1% one, one if everybody is having, then 10 people. For the 10 members, they will be able to appoint a proxy on dealing it. Okay. What if it is more than 10% of the total share capital? Now see the point. However, a member who is holding, see this point. However, a member who is holding more than 10% of the total share capital may appoint a single person. That means beyond 10% means for that particular person, only one proxy. And he cannot act as a proxy for any other person or shareholder. Very simple. Proxy means divided into two. Less than 10% of share capital, more than 10% of share capital. Less than 10% of share capital, arrow mark down, not exceeding 50. More than 10% of the share capital, only one person is allowed. As simple as that. You will have the appointment of proxy. When you appoint that person, you will have to file that in the form number MGT11. Okay. Now, when will you tell that on behalf of me, my proxy is going to come? Section 105 of the Act provides that a proxy received 48 hours before the meeting will be valid, two days. So before two days, if you tell that, if you say that the, on behalf of me as a shareholder, proxy will come and attend means, then it is fine. Even if the articles provide for a longer period, still within two days, if you do, it is going to be perfect. So remember 48 hours. Why I'm saying two days is not too many, two days has come into our provision. So we can accordingly remember that. Yes. Now coming to the next provisions, let's see the remaining provisions of the proxy. What is that they are talking about? The notice of the meeting 
shall clearly state that the members who have cast their vote by remote e-voting to the meeting may also attend the meeting but shall not be entitled to cast their vote again. This is a very simple point. If you have already voted by e-voting, again, you will not be able to do it. Let's take for an example. The shareholder, he had an idea that he will not be able to attend in person. So he told two, two days before my proxy will attend. But uh, suddenly he ensured that he has a quite a decent amount of system that he can do it for a e voting. So he has done a e voting. So the, the person who is the original shareholder is already done with the e voting. The original shareholder has done a e voting. Now proxy has come here. Will he be able to cast his vote again? No. The original person itself has already voted. So this fellow will not have anything to vote in the uh, he's cast his vote again. So the point is only one is allowed. That's what they are trying to say. Okay. Proxy. Can they do inspection to the books of uh, the anything related to the books? Yes, they can try to do. They can conduct an inspection, but only during the business hours. That is very important. So the point that we wanted to cover is it can be only during the business hours. At least three days notice in writing is required to be given to the company for conducting an inspection. That means if that person is not known, they will try to verify whether he is an authentic person and he is very authorized to do it. So the person, so it will easily take some three days to ensure it should get covered. Then penalty provisions, which is going to be self-explanatory in the sense, just glance that there will be penalty provisions if you are not complying with it. And if you have not properly issued an invitation, and if you have not ensured that you have refused the inspection to members at any time or anybody who has refused uh, the proxy to do it and the company and the person will be in a default. So ensure that any of this, if it is there, then it can be done. Then the offenses under this section are compoundable. Compoundable means very simple. It is only ensuring that the uh, compoundable means, yes, you can try to negotiate. You can try to uh, compromise on that particular. That means if you you are the person who gave the complaint, depending on that fellow's reaction, if you reverse or if you take back the complaint, then it becomes compoundable offense under section 441. Compoundable means compromising. So easily you can compromise and speak with that fellow and ensure that. Now that's what they are talking about in the rules also. Only a member can be a proxy registered under section 8 of the company. That means he should have been a member of that company when it is section 8 company. So this is a quite a different point. So market very important. Exemption to the private company. You can write exemption for that also. Yes. Now coming to the voting procedures. Voting. Why they needed a voting? When they wanted to take a decision, when the decision is taken by the company's members, it is obviously crucial. So when it is for the crucial for the working of the company, the decision has to be taken. For the decision that requires, they need consensus from the members. That means they need approval from the members attending the meeting. This consensus is reached through voting. Based on the voting only, they will have this. Guys, I was already talking about voting is always four types. If you remember chairman, only by he will start his electing the chairman only by show of hands. Then we told if they have decided by any other way till it is elected by poll or whatever, that till that time show of hands will be applicable, that chairman will be applicable. All that and all we were talking about here, they made it very simple with picture formatted. What are the four types of voting? Voting by way of show of hands, okay? They raise their hands and then they will do. Second, electronic means. Electronic means is by voting in the system. So accordingly, an option will be provided. So you can again, against that, you can try to vote or for that also you can vote. Demand for poll. Poll I have already told about. Count Banega Kuropati so that you can remember it very easily. Voting by postal ballot. Where you are not in that particular place, through the ballot paper in electronic way, you can try to uh, give an voting. So this is the four types. What are the four types? You can remember by way of saying show of hands. Electronic means demand of poll and postal ballot. This four will be quite big in number. The electronic means and all will be quite big in number. We need to go inside and see what is there. But easy provisions only, let's go. The right to vote is a personal right of the shareholder. Yes, we have already told this. It is the right of his, his uh, personal right to do. Whether he may use it 
he, he may also split his vote for or against the resolution it is not always one member one vote depending on the capital also it can be done so it can be for or against the resolution so that will prescribe how it has to be done so this is what they are trying to say when it comes to what when it comes to your voting 